Okay, I think we're just about done with this picture. Um, if I was, you know, really doing something serious with it, I'd probably spend a little bit more time on it. But I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. So my, my last step is to just go ahead and put my watermark, my logo on it, uh, shrink it down, get it ready for uh, the web, and it'll be all ready for posting. So what I am going to do now, I'm going to grab my uh, Oops, that's not what I'm looking for. We're going to grab a brush there. And I'm going to select my watermark action. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a separate layer. Um, once again, it's going to set a style to that layer. It's going to select my logo. And it'll let me pop it wherever I want to pop it. So I'm going to click on watermark. You'll see in the layers palette that created a new layer up here. Gave it some effects. Uh, Here's my secrets here, so everyone can see my secrets of how my logo is created. Uh, the layer has layer effects of drop shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, bevel and emboss, and satin. And what it does is all those effects get um, put into this brush right here. So I'm going to take this brush, and I'm going to click once, one click only, please. And there's my logo. Um, so you see where it has the nice little outer glow, uh, the inner glow. It's a little, I think there's an emboss in there, isn't there? Bevel and emboss. Yeah, you can see a little bit of texture there. Again, probably can't see it in the web video here, but you see the uh, full size picture posted somewhere. You can see that little bit of a bevel. So uh, we're all good there. I can either uh, leave it as it is or I can flatten these layers, flatten the image, and I'm going to hit my, uh, something you can do to when you have your picture just about ready and you want to see it without any interruptions, go ahead and hit your tab key, that'll get rid of your menus. Then you can also hit your F key, and that'll change your background, and it's going to move around a little bit here, I'll, I'll resize it, and now that uh, gives me just our picture on a black background and uh, you can see everything a lot, lot better that way. Uh, but let's go ahead and bring back our menus and bring back the picture the way it was. Don't click on there. And I think I'm happy with the picture. So I am going to go to File, Save for Web and Devices, because I know I'm just going to be using this on the web. And a big menu comes up here. Let's move it down so we can see. Well first of all look at the bottom here. We're at JPEG right now. It is at 90 quality and 333K. Um, what I'm going to do, let's move this down here. Uh, I'm going to oops, let's move it over so we can see. Optimize to file size. And I like doing all mine at 300. So desired file size is 300K. It's going to change um, uh, change the picture so it's optimized at 300K. Uh, let's go ahead and click on OK. And now what we saw was 90 before is now 87 because there's a little bit more detail. Um, had I done a sharpening, um, it probably would get be a lower quality because uh, there's more detail there and it would have had to shrink it down a little bit more so uh, let's go ahead and save that and I'm going to save it to my desktop for now um, right there so let's save to my desktop and that picture is done um, one other thing I did talk about during the, uh, the meetup group I did a lab sharpen this picture doesn't really need it but I'll I'll demonstrate it real quick for everyone to see. Um, what happens is, if I was just to do a regular sharpening, uh, to sharpen, smart sharpen or unsharp mask, um, I did a sharpening. Raise this way up here. Let's do that and mount up here. Uh, maybe the 150 or so. One. Yeah, let's do it to 170 because I'm gonna 175. So I'm going to go up high on the on the lab sharpening too. Let's do our radius at two. There we go. Now, 
you really see a lot of uh, what's going on. on this, I see it on the fingers, especially here. Look at the fingers. That's a really weird color on the fingers. Uh, what's happening is with, when the sharpening uh, gets done to this picture, uh, it just starts to make a mess with your colors. That's something you want to do. And now uh, let's zoom in on the face too. You know, the face and uh, we got some weird colors happening. You know, some antiquing going on or something right there. Don't like it. No good. So let's get rid of that. And we got a somewhat blurry picture here, but it's not too bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image and change our mode to lab, LAB color. Now, LAB is lightness and A and B. Uh, A and B are the color channels. There's also a lightness channel. So we're going to look over at our channels here. Now we have lab, lightness, and A and B. Let's switch back to RGB color, which was where we started. We've got the red, green, and blue channel. But for this technique, we want to do lab color, lightness, and A and B. When you do sharpening, you only want to sharpen the lightness channel. You don't want to sharpen the colors. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just select the lightness. That's all we're going to do. Now we're going to go back to filter and we're going to go to sharpen and unsharp mask. And yeah, it still looks pretty harsh there, but uh, okay, we'll back it off a little bit. Go down to one. I think we can leave it at 175 though. Click on OK. And now we're going to go back to image mode, change it back to RGB. And you see red, green, and blue are back. So, if we zoom in on the hand like we looked at before, um, don't, do not have that, uh, that color problem. We had a, a nice red streak here last time with uh, just doing the, the sharpening out of lab mode. But uh, we do it this way and no color problems. So that's why we like to sharpen in lab mode instead of, uh, instead of RGB. Now get in the lab, select that lightness channel, and then just sharpen the lightness channel. Now we go back and we have a, a, pretty, good, a pretty good sharpening on this. I don't think we can fade it from here. Um, anyways, let's get rid of this all together. Uh, go back to flatten image. Okay, what my action does, uh, it does all this for me. Um, it gives me a second layer again and a, a, a layer mask. If I wanted to, doesn't might give me a layer mask. Does not give me a layer mask, um, but it does my lab sharpening for me. Does a very good good job of sharpening. But if I think it's too much, if it's getting a little too harsh in some areas, I can either give myself a mask and and uh, give myself another brush and, and mask out some of that sharpening altogether. Or I can just bring down the opacity of it so it's not as harsh. So, say we wanted that 60%. Still very good sharpening, but it's not going crazy on us. Uh, so that's lab sharpening. It's, uh, if, you, if you do sharpening, I recommend you do your sharpening in lab. Um, so, we've done our logo, we've done our lab sharpening. Um, this picture is done. It is now saved for the web and it's, it's ready to put up. Um, I'll do one more video and we'll show you how to actually make your own action. Um, we'll go through and we'll do a lab sharpen action I think. So uh, stay tuned for one more video.